do think, uh, Pierre, your question about, you know, when does Bitcoin break the system is a topic not discussed enough. And I just want to point out that, like, if Bitcoin does break the fiat system and the financial products and services that people need to live their lives are not built on top of Bitcoin rails, we are screwing over the world. Like, it is not going to be a good situation for us. So, no, I you know, disagree. I, I really don't think so. I think that the existing, people can't like, you, buy here, here's the thing. You, you can use Bitcoin on the, on Visa. You can use Bitcoin on ACH. You can use Bitcoin in a wire transfer. Like, all of these systems, you'd be amazed how quickly, uh, you know, it, it would be like, the, it, would, it would be like the preparation for Y2K, right? Like, okay, we got to rewrite, uh, you know, some banking software, but here we go. Like, this is happening. And I, I, I just don't think that it would be that disruptive. I, I think that in the economy would, would do great because it would have this huge burden taken off of it, of this massive siphoning of wealth from productive individuals to uh, the totalitarian states. So Pierre, long term, you're absolutely right about that. But short term, you're completely wrong. It would be like the most disruptive, chaotic, horrible mess that society has ever gone through. And if we're not careful, Bitcoiners will be blamed for the mess when all we're trying to do is offer the way out of the mess. And I think that's something that we need to be really careful about when it starts happening. It's not going to be a peaceful, friendly time. So, you know, I, I do think what you bring up here is like, it's an inevitability. And, and, you know, if you're putting a 250 K market cap, I think what does that equate to, to a $20 trillion market cap or $10 trillion market cap? Is that what it is? A 250 K. I think that's it 10 trillion. It's gold. 10. Yeah. It's over by gold in the trillions. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think gold's 10 trillion or, or 9 trillion. So, um, you know, the dot com bubble was 20 trillion. And uh, the bubbles can only get so big before the bubble causes a crisis in the legacy system. And so, you know, when the dot com and the savings and loan crisis came, when the dot com crisis came, and the subprime mortgage crisis came, the ramifications for people's standard of living was so dramatic that the Federal Reserve felt compelled to step in to try to bail the system out. And so, you know, when we go to a $10 trillion, $15 trillion market cap on this next bubble, and then we have a 75% drawdown, that's going to be more vicious than the dot-com bubble. And so I can't wait to see, uh, you know, uh, whoever it is who's in office at that time, um, or Fed chairman at the time, uh, have to step in and be the buyer of last resort because otherwise, you know, Walmart's treasury is going to be wiped out from all of their reckless uh, Bitcoin investments. So, um you know, I, I do think that it's a thing that's not, ten, like, it could be within the next 10 years. And we are nowhere, nowhere, nowhere close to being able to support even even 5% of commerce in the world happening on top of Bitcoin. We're, we can't do that right now. Not, not even 1%. So we have so much that has to be built now. And that's why I think I started this off by saying, like, it's Bitcoiners' responsibilities that we, gotta, we have to go fully native so that we create the demand and force the product innovation so that in the future, when we do destroy the system by accident or, or on purpose, however you want to frame it, um, uh, there is a treaded path for others to follow. There is a system in place that can be built upon that can, you know, we can build back from the ashes. Yeah, I don't know. Be I'm fine using Bitcoin at JP Morgan Chase. I know that's like controversial, but I just don't have any problem with it. So I don't think that like there's, some extreme urgency to where uh, we do we do need to do what you're describing. We should be careful with the narrative that Bitcoin is what destroys the fiat system. Uh, the fiat system is destroying itself, and it will destroy yeah. itself. And um, if if Bitcoin is seen as like, oh, thank God that alternative has been built since this system destroyed itself, that is a far better narrative than a bunch of crazy anarchists built this thing to take down the government. Um, that that will be a that will be a situation we don't want to find ourselves in. Sure. No, I, I I totally agree with that. That's why we have to we have to make it crash as quickly as possible so that you know they they, they don't have the time to take out their vengeance upon us. But yeah, I, I point well taken. Point or well taken. alternative is that the people in charge are also participating in the upside of Bitcoin so that you know they won't blame Bitcoin because they're, they're in on it. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah, but fuck That's those guys. Not. <laughs> that will be the single thing that it makes it most likely that Bitcoin will not be vilified to death 
when things start changing is that uh, those people that have positions of authority have already for some time become part of part of Bitcoin, own owned some and, and are using it. And they may not be public about it, but once they have it on their own book, there will be much less antagonism toward it. And I think that that's something that we should all you know hope happens in time. Let's hope they're hitting those uh, cash app uh, weekly limits on uh, <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs>